Oh, hello. I'm your guest host, Santa Claus, and this is the Santa Claus Show, formerly known as Alex the Analyst Show. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we are going over... Did I do that right? Today, we are going over resumes. Um, very important stuff. I review thousands of elf resumes every year. Uh, I feel like I'm pretty well qualified to tell you what to do and what not to do. Um, Alex, unfortunately, could not join us. Um, he was just, you know, his schedule, kids and vegetables and all that. So um, I will be leading this discussion and it will be fun and we will enjoy each other's company, I am sure. Um, all right. That's enough of that. I can't do this anymore, guys. It was me. <laughs> it was me the whole time. Um, I know. I'm sorry to disappoint you. That was not actually Santa Claus. Uh, that was me in a Santa Claus suit. Um, I'm going to take this off really quick because honestly, it's really hard. It's really hot. And so to not scar you for life, I am going to step off screen for just a second. I'm going to take it off and I'll be right back. And then we'll, I guess, actually start. Uh, so give me just one second. I'm literally like right here. I just don't, um, ow, it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of a process. All right. Ooh. Get this bad boy on. How do we put this on? There we go. How's that look? Nice. All right. We're, we're cooking. We're cooking with fire now. Ah, I can finally see again. <laughs> um, Santa was... He was an inspiration. I just, because of, due to COVID, um, we, every year in the past, have taken our kids um, to the Santa at the mall to get their picture with Santa. And he obviously is not as easily accessible these days. And so I decided to dress up as Santa Claus. Um, and we had a blast. It was super fun. Got some super cute pictures. I probably am not going to share those, but... Um, Got some really, really fun photos, and I have the whole getup, which I, um, I'm just not dedicated enough to put that thing on again. It was, it was, it was a bit much, um, but you know, gotta, gotta do it for the kids. So anyways, uh, but we actually really will be going over resumes. Uh, Santa knows nothing about resumes, so I'm glad to be back so that my audience can get something out of this video. Um, let me pull up my notes really quick, because um, for whatever reason, I got off of them. <clears throat> so we're going to be going over a data analyst resume, everything from the top to the bottom. Here's the, some of the things that we're going to be covering. Tips for each section uh, on your resume, things not to do. The glance factor, as I am claiming, I've never, I haven't, maybe that's a thing, but I'm trademarking it. Um, don't sue me, please. Tips for grad, um, college graduates. Tips for people switching careers and why your resume is super important. Um... And that last one seems pretty obvious. It might be. Disclaimer. Before we get into all this, let me put this down a little more. I think it looks better. Disclaimer. Before we get into all this, I'm going to read this because I wrote this and I want to read this verbatim as to not mess anything up or leave any confusion. This will be controversial and you will not agree with me about everything. I guarantee it. You know, use your better judgment. If you like what I'm putting out, if you like the things that you're hearing, make those changes to your resume. If not, keep it. I'm not forcing you to change your resume. If you start applying to jobs and you start not getting any job interviews, that's not my fault. Don't blame me. Um, but, you know, in all honesty, um, I think that what I'm going to say is, is genuinely not everyone's going to agree with. I have my own personal opinions. I've seen lots and lots of resumes. These are things that I think are good tips. I obviously would not be telling you these things if I didn't think they were helpful and good advice. Um, another disclaimer before we start, this is probably going to be a really long video. I have a feeling. Uh, and if it's not, that's fantastic. Uh, but I just, I can tell. Um, and give me a second. I'm actually, I'm adding one more thing. Oops. I'm adding one more thing to the list as I'm speaking because um, it wasn't something that I forgot. It was something that I had meant to add on there and put in the wrong spot. 
Um, bum, bum, bum. Here we go. So I'm going to go through each section first. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the college graduates and people switching careers because I get a ton of people, a ton of people who are in those two categories, right out of college or switching careers, like so many people. And so I'm hoping that I can try to give you more, some more specific guidance instead of just um, what we're going to talk about, which is not generic or general in any by any means. I'm going to get pretty specific. Um, but I will be talking to you guys specifically. So if you're in one of those categories, um, I, I'll try to leave like one of those things down below in the scrolly bar thing. Um, we can just click on it. Um, it's probably going to be near the end of the video. And I don't want you to sit through all of me talking if you don't want to hear it. So with that being said, let's actually start getting into it. I'm going to start at the very top with the contact section. The contact section is the most simple part. So this should be the easiest thing to explain. But you really need to have your name. Um, that's important. You need to have where you live. You don't have to put your complete address. I actually don't recommend doing that. I I don't know why people still do that. Because when you send me your resume now, I know where you live. Um, and that just seems weird to me. Um, I'm not like stalking you or anything. It's just, it feels wrong. Just put like Dallas, Texas. Don't put your full address. That's my opinion. <clears throat> um, put your email address, make it professional. Don't use, okay, and this is an example, a real one. I never use this on a resume, but this is a real email that I used to have. It was Pedro for president one um, at yahoo.com has been decommissioned. You can email it if you'd like. I don't use it anymore, but I had that email since like the fifth or sixth grade. Um, I did phase it out eventually. Uh, now I have a, some more professional ones. But I use that one for a long time. Dude, don't put that on your resume. It looks terrible. Use your first name, your last name. If you have a name like John Smith, um, you know, get creative. Just make it unique. Don't make it weird. Don't don't make things awkward right as they're starting your resume. You need to have um, preferably a LinkedIn uh, link that link goes to your LinkedIn where they can see it. And you ha need to have that updated and looking good. I highly recommend having that because maybe they want to see your who, what you look like. Maybe they want to see, um, you know, how many followers you have or, or connections you have, your skills, et cetera. I don't know, but it's good to have. It's like your job portfolio or it's your job um, profile, really. So I recommend having that updated. I also recommend if you have any portfolio projects or you have um, a GitHub that you want to link in there, this is probably where you'd put that as well. Um, and you can do those individually if you want to, and I'll talk about that later on in the video, but I have mine up in my contact section so they can go check it out right away. Um, and that's just what I prefer. So that's the contact section. It, it should be, it should be pretty straightforward. That should be the easiest thing. You shouldn't be messing up really anything in that section. All right, we are going to move on to the summary section. And the summary section to me is one that I think a lot of people get wrong, one that I personally got wrong for many years, admittedly. I mean, if you watched one of my first videos ever on this channel, I was reviewing my resume that got me into, you know, the Fortune 500 company that I work at now. And it still had that format. Um, and I have since, well, if I remember correctly, it's still that, that summary format. I have since changed it um, because I have seen a lot of resumes since then um, after being on, a, on the hiring team. And so I feel like that was a little bit outdated on the way I did it was not proper. And so self-admittedly, I have made that mistake many times myself. What I'm going to, and give me a second, I'm, I'm getting to, I'm, I'm pulling something up really quick. Okay. Something that I like to think about when writing a summary section is not a highlight of where you've been and all the skills you know. I worked at this place, I worked at that place, here are my skills, you know, yada, yada. And a lot of people have like four, five, six sentences in there, and that is just not what you want. Again, throughout this video, I may try to pull up some like example in this area right beneath my head. If I don't, I got lazy. Um, very possible that you're not seeing anything on your screen, but you know, you get a good imagination. Um, so the summary section, 
I like to think of this as an elevator pitch. If you were to get on an elevator with the CEO of your favorite company that you've been dying to work at your entire life and you had 30 seconds or 15 seconds while you're going up that elevator to sell yourself and get a job at that place, what would you say? And, um, you know, you, you shouldn't be begging. There should be no begging. You should be stating your who you are, uh, your what you bring to the table, your best skills that you are most proficient in, and then state what you want, what you're trying to get out of this. Um, and I'll kind of, I'll take you through of like a fake scenario or fake example. So I would say I am Alex Freeberg. I have four years or two years, well, however many years you have. I have two years as a data analyst, two years experience as a data analyst. I specialize in SQL, Python, Azure, and Tableau. I think I would be a really big, let me rephrase it. Let me let me actually rephrase that second part because this is the second sentence is you want to state what kind of what you want or what you're trying to get. Seeking a position at your company as an entry-level data analyst or a mid-level data analyst um, to yada, yada, yada. Not, not a perfect example. Again, I hope I bring one up. The Main point of what I'm trying to say is please do not like just drone on and on about, I have this certification, I have that certification, I, I've worked here, I've worked there. State really quickly who you are, what you're good at, and why they should hire you, what you're looking for, and that they should hire you for that position. Um, that's really what, to me, what this section is for. So, you know, some things that I would avoid are just stating facts about yourself. Like, I went to this school. I went here, I've worked here, I got this internship. These are facts. Um, and you want to state a fact in that first sentence, and then you want to go on to kind of where you're trying to go, what you want from them. Uh, again, that's my opinion. Some people do not agree. They like, it's, it's the summary section. You're supposed to summarize who you are. Sure, go for it. I personally don't read super, like I'll skim the super long ones. If I see one or two sentences, I'll read the whole thing. Um, and I'd rather have somebody read the, the highlights instead of, or like the really important stuff for two sentences than skim five sentences of like my whole story. So that's just my opinion. Let's move on to the skills section. I think this is, uh, and to back up, I think the summary section is not super important. This is not to me what you should be spending all your time making right. I don't think that th that, that section is the most important because um, you know, they're going to look at your skills. They're going to look at your skills section probably really quickly. I think this is one of the most important sections. And then they're going to look at your probably um, work experience and education. And so I think that if you're really stuck on the summary, just try to come up with something that sounds good. Does not have to be perfect. I wouldn't spend all your time here. Um, so that's just me. Let's move on to the skills section. And I think this is one that I really think a lot of people need to work on. I would say the vast majority of people need to work on this section specifically. Uh, a lot of people will write things like this. Uh, very skilled in SQL, Python, Tableau, R, etc. And they'll write it out or they'll write... Um, experienced in Tableau, experienced in SQL, just like that. Another thing that I see is people where it's a bullet point and they list every single skill that they have. And some of them are not relevant to this field at all. At all. Like not even close. Like if you have Adobe Photoshop on there, I Maybe that wasn't a perfect example. Maybe somehow you're able to use that for data analytics. I don't know. But let me think of another one. Um, <clears throat> you put, I don't even, I can't even th think offhandedly of a skill that does not relate. Um, let me look. Uh, audacity. Audacity, ability to, to edit audio through Audacity. Something that's just completely random. That has nothing to do with data analytics. You do not need that being on there. Again, these are some examples of things that you shouldn't be doing, in my opinion. So I'm going to tell you what I think you should do 
what I prefer seeing and why I prefer it this way. Um, so hopefully that it makes sense and I'm not just coming off as judgmental. I am not trying to be judgmental. I used to do this. I am speaking from a place of experience in, in ignorance on my part. So um, what I have found really works is just bullet points. And you can even have two rows of bullet points depending on how you're formatting your resume. Um, but bullet points, and you want to say one skill per bullet point. Then, um, and I'm going to give, there's a few examples that will follow this rule. Then, if there are certain skills, which I'm about to mention, you can add a parentheses and go into sub-skills within that skill. For example, two that I always do this for um, is Python and Excel. And I tell everybody that I work on with resumes that this is, this is very helpful for a hiring manager to see when they're reviewing resumes. If they're reviewing 10 resumes, this is gonna help them. Um, and I'm gonna go into that a little bit more in a second. So in those parentheses for Python, you're gonna say, you're gonna do a bullet point, Python, and in parentheses, you wanna highlight the best libraries that are relevant to, the, to this industry or to the type of job that you're trying to get. I have pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and seaborn, or some variation of that in mine. And so what that does is when a hiring manager is looking at my resume, that is something called the glance factor. It's something I mentioned earlier. I, trademark, if it's not, I don't even think that's legal, legally binding. <clears throat> but basically what this is, is when somebody glances at a resume, one of the first things they're going to are the skill section and the work experience section. So when they're going to that skill section, at a minimum, they're looking for a certain specific skills, right? They're looking, maybe they're just looking for SQL and Excel. Maybe that's it. But if they have to read through experienced in SQL, experienced in Excel, experienced in this, it is more, it's a lot more to visually take in and read, and they might miss it because it's not super obvious. It's in there with a bunch of other words. Um, whereas if you're doing this method, if you were glancing at Python and you're looking for Python, you'll see Python. Now, within that, you're gonna read that whole line. You're gonna read pandas, NumPy, et cetera, et cetera. And they're gonna be like, oh, we use NumPy. This guy knows NumPy. That might, that might boost me in their eyes just ever so slightly because they now know that I know pandas and they use pandas. Now, if I just put Python in with a bullet point, Python is so broad. It is so vast, you can do so many things with it. I want to highlight the things that are data analyst specific that they can gain value from, that I think that they will recognize and be like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about because one, he has specific uh, libraries dedicated um, to our field that are extremely helpful that we use day in and day out and this guy knows them. So that might bump me up in just a, like just a, another extra second that they're taking to read that. That's that glance factor. Um, and so I highly recommend doing that for Python. Another one is Excel. So in Excel, you can do things like um, Excel, Microsoft Excel, and then in parentheses, you can do pivot tables, you can do charts, you can say conditional formatting, you can say VLOOKUP. There are a lot of ones that you can write. Those are some just off the top of my head that I have on my resume. I think that this is the exact same thing. If a company really is heavily reliant on Excel, which a lot of companies are, and they know that you know how to use conditional formatting or pivot tables or all these other skills, again, it just might be a little bit of a boost on your resume right off the bat, right as they're just glancing at it. And not everybody glances at it. Some, some people read through the entire resume. Um, I have been guilty of kind of skimming resumes because I, once, I, once I start seeing start not seeing things that I'm looking for. Like I'm not in the skill section, I'm not seeing SQL. In the skill section, I'm not seeing, um, you know, Tableau or Python, whatever that skill is. Once I start not seeing it, then I start going into skim mode. I'm like, oh, this person probably doesn't have what I'm looking for. Then I just skim the rest. Whereas if I start seeing things that I really like, if I start seeing Python, pandas, NumPy, et cetera, I'm like, oh, these are skills that I'm really looking for. Uh, let me read this a little bit more in depth to see how they've used it in their job, um, which we'll get to in a little bit. That is my biggest advice in the skill section, my absolute biggest advice in the skill section. So, um, you know, if you want to keep it how you have it and you don't have it this way, that's fine. It doesn't hurt me. 
Um, I just feel like this is the most efficient, best way to, to visually place your skills at a glance, glance in a glanceable way. It, it, not a word, but in a glanceable way. Let's move on to arguably, if not the most important or the second important behind skills, which is the experience section. There is, I have seen some really bad experience sections. Um, and I'm the, no one in particular that I'm thinking of. I know you're thinking of someone specific from an earlier video or, you know, one where I was reviewing resumes. I have no one in particular. I'm just in general. I have seen a lot of bad resumes um, and a lot of bad experience sections. Here's what I, what I, the advice I'm going to give you. And again, take it, take it or leave it. I mean, I'm giving you gold here, but you can toss in the trash if you want to. That's not going to hurt my feelings. The experience section should not be 10 bullet points. It should not be eight bullet points. I think at a max, the max should be five. I think a sweet spot is four. Um, it's, and, and you, you know, it's just one of those things where after about four or five, it's like, how much more can you fit in there? How many more important things can you highlight in a job? Um, so I think the sweet spot is four. I would not go above five. I have seen ones where they have had like 15 per job and they had like five jobs listed on there. And so it was like eight pages long, an eight page resume. And I, I was just like, look, I'm, I, and they, this was early on when I had time to like review people's resumes. And I was like, dude, this is just, I, I, this, I don't know where to start. I was like, you have got to trim back these job descriptions. I was like, this is taking forever to just even skim through. It took a long time. Um, and so, you know, take, take that uh, as a good example of why you don't want to do too many. It just, it, it, it lengthens your resume. It's a lot to read. It's a lot of free text, right? So it's a lot of sentences or, or, you know, somewhat sentences and it's a lot to read. And so for a hiring manager to read through six, seven, eight of those, um, and if they're all long, it's just, it's not very realistic unless they're super interested from other areas of your resume. So I like to keep it short and sweet, highlight the most important things. So how a good job description would look to me is you have the, um, <clears throat> the job title, you're going to have the company, the date ranges from when you work there. It doesn't have to be specific. You can even do just like January of 2019 to January of 2020. As simple as that, or January 2019 to current. Like keep that part really simple. Um, then I, again, I like bullet points. That's just me. So in bullet points, the a really good way, and you'll hear this a ton when writing this, and there's so many... Um, there are so many good resources to write to learn how to write them. I will include some links in the description on good tips, excuse me, for resumes. I will include that in the description. So if you're curious about, curious, if you are curious about um, some examples or some places you can go as resources, I will include those uh, down below. All right, so this is something you've probably heard, but you wanna use action verbs right at the beginning. So created, generated, brought in, um, implemented. Again, these are just ones off the top of my head, but you want to start it off with a strong um, verb. I think it's a verb, I'm not thinking clearly. You want to start it off in a strong way. You don't want to say, I worked on Excel spreadsheets. I worked on building dashboards. You want to say, built interactive dashboards that led to XYZ. Built interactive dashboards, built 300 interactive dashboards for 52 clients. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. All right. Think about your job specifically. Think about what you have done that helped the company and then write that out in an actionable way that makes you sound good. Do not list, do not just list what you did in the job. Don't say I did this or did X, Y, Z. 
that it you should be listing the impact that you had on the company intermingled with what you actually did at the company. I also think it is really good to try to use some type of quantitative information in those job descriptions. So if you can use something numerical, like I created 300 dashboards, I led to this amount of revenue increase. Um, that doesn't happen often, especially for data analysts, but it happened for me in a previous job where I was very client focused, um, where I led to a, a client purchasing a product that led to um, you know revenue being brought in. That to me, it just stands out and it, and it makes you look good. And, and just try to think of something that an impact that you had, whether it was reduced time, like I created this automated process that used to take 10 hours in a week or something, and now it only takes three hours because you know of this. So that is my biggest advice, is, is try to use some, write it correctly and use the proper verbiage right at the beginning, and try to use something quantitative. And, and, and so the quantitative part will push and say, hey, here's what I did and here's the impact, instead of just saying, here's what I did. Um, it, you're not listing your responsibilities, you're listing the impact that you had during that, um, that job. And that to me is the most important thing when you're searching for a job. They want people who are problem, solver, problem solvers, they want people who are go-getters. They don't wanna hire people who just, you know, on their resume at least, because that's all you have to display who you are, on a resume, they don't just want someone who, I did this. They want someone who actionably did, worked on this and this outcome, outcome came out of it. Uh, you know, again, it may not be possible for every single job description, but try your best. That's my biggest advice for that section. Let's move on to um, the education section. Education section should be up there with the easeability of the con uh, contact section. Education should really just be, um, again, if you went to college, it should be your college, your degree, and when you graduated. And you don't even have to put when you graduated, you can just put your degree. Um, that should be super simple. If you have multiple degrees, even better, just put them right underneath. You do not have to add all of your coursework if you do not want to. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more later with the college grads, you can. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it at all, but you don't have to. So if you, you know, maybe you want to add a little bit more information because your resume is lacking a little bit, um, you can add coursework. You can say, here are the types of things that we covered in uh, at my college or when I was getting this degree. And that may look really nice and be beneficial. And so if it does, and if you think that looks good, by all means, add it. I have nothing against it. Um, moving on to achievements and certifications. Please, for the love of all that is good in this world, keep it data analyst or leadership or communication specific. Something that will at least look good for you. Um, you know, you do not need to put that you were the 2013 Bass Pro from Arkansas championship winners. I it, That's a fantastic achievement, but it means absolutely nothing. Like, please make it relevant. And I have seen that personally, and it was it was weird. It was just weird, and um, yeah, no, nothing else to say on that. Um, if you haven't already seen my certifications, um, Alex Anla show episode where I talk all about certifications, there I have a few different thoughts on certifications on a resume. So if you're getting certifications or certificates from like Udemy, Coursera, um, or, or any of those course websites, I don't really recommend it being on your resume. Although if you are just starting out and you are, you know, entry level, just out of college, it doesn't hurt. Um, it doesn't really make you look bad. It doesn't look great though when <laughs> you're like four or five years into your career and you have uh, a Udemy one on there. Udemy is a fantastic platform to learn, but their certificates don't hold a lot of weight. That's the only reason I wouldn't, I wouldn't add it on your resume. Go put it on LinkedIn. Show people that you're actively working, that you're, you know, continuously learning and building your skill sets. That's what LinkedIn is for. It is, to me, is not for this. Um, achievements, if you won any awards, if you were top of your class, if you're coming out of college, you were top of your class, 
Um, you know, if you were a data analyst board of directors for your club in school, again, this is, I guess, you know, new grad kind of thing, but those are the kind of achievements or relevant things. Just make sure it's relevant. Ask your question, is this relevant? If it's not, please remove it. Uh, it does not need to be on there. Um, unless, and I'll make one caveat to that, unless it's like super interesting and it, and it'll be like a conversation piece in a resume. So if you're like, you came in first in the Boston Marathon, maybe that maybe you'll add that to achievements because that's just super cool. Um, you know, you can you can kind of tweak that and make it sound really good in a resume um, or really good in an interview. That those are my that's my thoughts. That is um, that is the main ones. Now there's another one that you can add. And this one I would, I'm hesitant for some people to say add this, but you can add a projects section. Now, a project section is going to be kind of in lieu of, or maybe in addition to adding um, your portfolio or your personal um, GitHub where you have all of your code and projects stored on. You can, if you want to, put it on your resume. Now, I have some thoughts on this, and I, this is not for everybody. My first thought is that if you are coming right out of college, the project section makes really good sense. You probably don't have a lot of experience, so you, so you may only have like one job. Maybe you were an RA in college, so you don't have much experience, or you were, you know, you worked at um, Ben and Jerry's. So you don't have much relevant experience, so it's not going to be a super long resume, and you want to fill fill that gap. Input something really relevant, something that you worked hard on, something that really shows off your skills the project section might be perfect for you. And in that case, I would highly recommend it. Um, if you have experience, if you have, if you're switching careers, I might not. Um, if your job is, let's say, and I'm going to use healthcare again. I know, I'm sorry, I keep using healthcare. If you're in healthcare, you were a nurse, you have lots of nursing experience. Add your just maybe last two jobs, or maybe you're in your last job and, and you'll fill that out. You probably won't need a project section as long as you can either link your um, portfolio project um, or you have lots of things in your skill section or your experience section or your education spec section if you were a nurse for a while. Um, you probably won't need a project section, but it doesn't hurt. If you add it, it still won't be a bad idea. It's, it's just typically for people who are searching careers, they have longer resumes. That's typically how it goes. Um, and you're, you're trying to like trim down your resume um, to get it to even fit. So, you know, just be just be aware of that and be thinking about that. Uh, real quick, just doing a time check. All right, this is going to be a long one. That's no problem though. We still got we still got things to to talk about. So some some of my tips for college grads. Um, if you are right out of college, either bachelor's or master's, doesn't matter. I think in the, um, you know, in that skill section, you don't have, and you know, this, uh, this might genuinely be controversial, which is, I don't think you need to know that skill perfectly or even super well to put it on your resume. Um, because if you were just starting out and you're right out of college, you sh they should not be expecting you to be proficient in SQL, Tableau, by all these skills. They should not be expecting that. And that's, you know, you're right out of school. You learn the basics, you learn the concepts, you maybe work on some projects that you don't have any work experience, so they shouldn't be expecting the most from you. So if you know SQL well enough to do joins and unions and, and maybe subqueries and CTEs and stuff like that, put it on your resume. Um, same for all these other skills, because you want to show them that you have knowledge in that area. You're not showing them that you are going to come in and like redo all of their automation processes. Python, that's not what you're promising, right? You're an entry level. So for college grads or new graduates, I recommend doing that. Um, another thing for college graduates is, um, again, in your education section, if you took a degree that is very relevant, computer science, something in um, analytics, something like that, your coursework, your coursework may be very relevant. And so if you want to show that you're studying um, databases and algorithms, you know, you can put that course on there in some way, shape, or form, or those courses on there, I mean, on, on your resume. And it might look really nice. And so I actually, if you took something really relevant, you might want to put that on there. It could be 
a very good thing to do. Um, another good thing for college graduates specifically is certifications. Now, I don't recommend certifications for everybody. Someone like me, I don't really need a lot of certifications anymore. My work experience and skills kind of speak for itself. But when you're right out of college, you kind of have to artificially prove that you know what you, maybe not artificially, but you need to prove that you know what you're doing without having any experience. Um, and certifications can be a way to do that. And so again, if you watch my certification episode, I talk a lot more in depth about which ones I like, which ones I think are good ideas, when you should get them, when you shouldn't. For new college graduates, I think certifications are a smart thing to do. Um, and that's a totally a personal thing that I think because, you know, some people think that certifications are for everybody. I do not. So just take that with a grain of salt. I think that that could be a good idea. Let's go over to people switching careers. Um, there are a few things I want to talk about really quick. If you are switching careers from something completely unrelated, um, and there's no one in particular that I'm thinking of, I'm just going to say a job, although I have talked to a lot of people with this job, teachers. I've talked to a ton of people who were teachers and are trying to switch into this field. Um, and again, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, I promise you. If you are a teacher, that's not, it's not really a lot of related experience. Like you were a middle school teacher, high school teacher, and that's what you've been doing for the past 10 years. I would recommend reformatting the descriptions of those to try to make it seem more of the analytical things you do. Because you track um, you track things in, in your, um, sorry, like I'm talking specifically about the experience section. In your job description of what you do, you are, you know, keeping track of students' progress and maybe you do that in an Excel. Maybe you do that in some type of software that the, that the school does. Um, you're tracking their progress, like right, those things. If you build any visualizations for the school when you're presenting um, at, you know, anything. You're presenting lots of stuff at schools, like in front of all the students or in front of your faculty. These are things that I would try to focus on. Like think, is there anything analytical related of present presentations, um, tracking things, working in Excel, um, creating visualizations of any kind and focus in on those and cater your job descriptions to those things. Um, I, I don't think, you know, in the job description, you should be putting things like taught history, taught um, science, eighth grade science, worked with the president to implement a new uh, fundraising event. These things are not super relevant. And so try to reformat it the best you can to make it analytics focused. That's one of my biggest advice and the biggest thing that I see people having an issue with. When you're coming from a different career path, when you're coming from a different and you're trying to make a 180 to, to change it, you have to also change your resume and change your job, job description to fit that new aspiration that you have. So if it's analytics and it's a 180, you need to change it to make it a 180 on your resume to show that you um, at least you know, in your current job have some relevancy. So that is one of my biggest advices. And then another thing that I think a lot of people miss when they're switching careers is to kind of cull the skill section a lot. Um, a lot of the skills from your previous job are not going to relate to your new job. So if, you know, I, I get, I'm get totally drawing blanks on examples, but look at your skill section. See if that is analytics focused. And if it's not, 95% of the time you should be removing it. And if you go down to only six, four, five or six skills, but they're all analytics focused, that's much better than having four or five analytics focused ones and then having eight other ones that are completely irrelevant. Uh, so that's my opinion on that. Um, and moving on to the last thing is why is your resume important? Um, it's important for a lot of reasons. One that is the all one of it's almost the only re way that you're going to get. I just butchered that whole thing. It is almost the only way that you were going to get interviews in some way, shape or form. Um, it's really hard to get a job these days without a resume. So you need to make it the best that you possibly can because hopefully or hopefully and potentially thousands of people are going to see this resume. So you want to make it really good to represent you well. Another reason is because this 
resume could be going through online job portals um, like LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Job, ZipRecruiter, all those things. All these automated processes and they look for keywords and they break it off by sections and you want this to look as well as you can for those automated processes to take in that information, spit it out on the other side and for it to still look good. Um, and so that is my... That is why I think it is just so incredibly important to have a good resume. I mean, you don't want to, you do not want to spend or, you know, put in 50% effort on your resume. You want to spend 110% on this resume, ask your friends to review it, ask other people to review it, um, get some feedback, um, join the discord, put your, you know, I have an Alex analyst discord. If you go to my channel, put it in there. Um, we have lots of people who do that and have gotten good feedback from other members in there. And so you know, if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and do that. That's a really good idea. Let's move on to, um, and real quick, that's it. That's that's all I got on resumes. Um, if you have any more questions about resumes, please comment below um, because I am sure there are things that I did not cover. Um, it may have been intentional, may not have been intentional. Maybe I missed something. So if you have questions um, that relate to you or just general questions, let me know below and I will try to answer those. Again, I try to answer every single question. Sometimes I miss them, and I apologize for that. Um, and so, you know, please ask, ask it below. Okay, guys. Now we are moving into one of my favorite times of the show. I don't know if I've ever said that before, but shout out to everyone over at Patreon. You guys are amazing. You guys are fantastic. I appreciate you. You guys are supporting this channel. You guys are making dreams come true. Uh, my dreams come true. And genuinely, you guys are just amazing. And for everyone who's supporting the channel, I, I genuinely appreciate you. Um, and if you want to support the channel, head on over to Patreon. I have a link in the description if you want to support the channel. Support me. Uh, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And I would, honestly, I would like you more because of that. I, this is this is conditional. My my love is conditional. Now on to maybe my second favorite part, or maybe my first favorite. Uh, it is the question of the week. This one comes from Chris Aquino or Aquino, probably Aquino. Uh, he said mushrooms. Uh, this is relating to one of the keywords for a previous video where I was talking about everything salary related, and he said th th that's what this video is from or that's where this question is from, is from on that video. He said, do you recommend asking about 401k bonuses, health insurance, et cetera, during your job interview or when you get the job offer? Super good question. And that's something that I remember I said, you should be asking these questions. Um, you need to ask these questions before you accept a job. What does the health insurance look like? Because I have had some really expensive health insurance plans and it is not good. Um, and you want to avoid that. And the easiest way to avoid that is simply asking, what is your health? Can you send me an outline of your, your health insurance and your costs? Super easy. I've done it, um, and I did it with the job I'm at now. Um, so for there are a few things where I would ask it in the interview and things that I would ask after the interview, either through email or through phone call if you're going to accept a job offer or however you want to do that. Um, ones that I think that you should ask after are things like bonuses and health insurance. I personally would not be asking about bonuses in the interview uh, or right after the interview. I wouldn't be like, hey, you know, what comes, uh, what, you have a bonus. You may ask that in a roundabout way, in a more strategic way of saying, can you explain to me a little bit more about the total compensation for this position? Um, and that's at the end of the interview. Or, or And I would say, that's more, that may be more geared toward um, at, actually at, at the job offer. It just depends. You kind of got to feel it out. But if they've offered you the job, if they have offered you the job, these things should be coming up naturally, right? Um, they may say, you know, your salary is 70000 And then you can say, um, you know, could you tell me a little bit more about the total compensation package that you guys offer? And so the 70,000 may turn into like a 90,000 total compensation after bonuses, 401k matching, um, you know, maybe they have a really good health insurance plan, they do ESPP, all these things, you know, 
those are things to ask. So I would, um, I would ask about the money later, probably in the job offer. Health insurance, you can ask it in either one. Um, and you can maybe even just bring it up at the end. And you say, um, you know, at the end of an interview, they're like, do you have any questions? You're like, you know, no, I don't have any. Uh, you don't say no. You said, yes, I do have some questions. I'd love to know more about, um, you know, the perks and benefits of working at your company, um, specifically, you know, the amenities or, you know, do you guys have coffee rooms, ta ping pong tables, health insurance? I make, Keep it professional. Don't ask about the ping pong tables in an interview. I, you know, it's just, I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to give some examples. So, you know, some things you're going to ask, some things you won't ask. Definitely feel the room. Depends on how far that second interview gets. Some get pretty far or some leave it really like open-ended where we're like, yeah, we'll give you a call. We're not really sure. So feel the room. Um, I think a lot of that stuff is going to be asked afterwards if they offer you the job, just as a rule of thumb. But again, I think you can ask these things in a strategic way at the end of an interview. So um, I lied earlier. This is my favorite part of the show. And I, I truly mean that. It makes me smile every single time. You make me smile. Uh, I'm not going to sing, but there's a wonderful song about smiling. I sing it all the time at home. Um, for, you, for, for those of you who don't know, uh, and for those of you who have stuck around, you're going get to get to know a little bit more about me today. Um, I sing all the time. And it drives my wife nuts. Well, it used to drive my wife nuts. I believe, and we just had this conversation not too long ago because we've been around each other 24-7. She says I sing like, like two hours a day, like just throughout my day or even more. That is a lot. And I, I'm starting to notice it more and more. I just, I sing all the time. I'm humming, I'm singing, I'm singing to my kids, just all the time. Um, and so I don't think I'm going to be doing that on the show anytime soon, but... Um, just a little, a little tidbit of information for you for sticking around all this way. My favorite part of the entire show is the keyword of the week to show that you uh, invested your time to make your career better, to make your resume better, to land jobs, and you are dedicated and committed to doing that more than everybody else. Everybody else left, but it's just you now. Uh, and you are... You are the ones whose resumes are going to stand out above everyone else's who's going to get those interviews. Not guaranteed, but I'm pretty sure. The vegetable of the week. That's right. We are keeping it vegetable-based this week. Is spinach. And the inspiration behind this one was I was watching Popeye. Um, not too long ago, actually. And I was, I was basically showing my daughter this one. Um, and I was like, this used to be a cartoon that people loved. And she's like, I've never heard of this guy. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So I showed her an episode. She thought it was pretty funny. Um, but you know, the metaphor here, if I'm really trying to force this, which I will, is spinach, when you ingest it, builds and grows everything else. And just like how we build and ingest data, it helps build everything else around it because the data is the lifeblood of our, of our jobs. Um, that one was super forced. Uh, so I hope, I hope you appreciate how hard I had to work at that um, to make some type of connection. So keyword is spinach. Put it in the comments below. Um, no special story needed, but if you want to add a story about spinach, I'd be impressed because I don't have any good stories about spinach. I just, I eat it when my wife puts it in meals. That's about it. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have anything else beyond that. Um, yeah, today's episode is about resumes. I love talking about resumes. I'm going to be doing more resume reviews. Um, if you do send me your resume, um, it could end up in a review, whether you want it or not. I'm not going to ask permission. I'm just going to do it. I'm just take, I will all delete your personal information. I promise. Any, any, personal information I'll get rid of, but you know, that may happen. So I, I think I'm going to be doing that another one of those soon because I haven't done those in gosh, like six months. It's been a long time. I just had other things on uh, the agenda, 
But I want to get back to that because I like reviewing resumes. I really do enjoy that. So I will be doing that again soon. Uh, that's all I have for today. I, I This is probably like my longest show ever. Um, so if you were stuck around for this one, kudos to you. Um, take a sip of our morning, uh, my night, but your potentially your morning coffee with me. That one's for you. Thank you for watching. I truly, genuinely, absolutely, 100% uh, uh, appreciate you and value that you're investing your time into my channel to better yourself in this career. That means a lot. I'm proud of you. I hope that you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. This will be airing like the day before Christmas. So, you know, Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays. I hope it is wonderful. I hope you are safe, but you're still able to spend some time with your family in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and yeah, that's all I got. Thank you guys. All right. I will see you in the next video next week. I am not stopping. Nothing is stopping me. Christmas ain't stopping me. New Year's ain't stopping me. I'm just rolling right along. So I will see you next week. Uh, that is, those will be my last two episodes before the new year. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.